Kate, is this a game where the passing game may need to come in to focus a little bit sharper than it has been? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're a very talented opponent. Um, we've seen that through three stack defense before, and I think that we uh, have done a good job attacking in our practices. And so I think definitely anytime you can get the passing game going, it definitely helps. But when Adrian and Deuce run for a touchdown every other carry, you know, we're, we'll do our part. How fun is that, to, you know, go get your blocks, but then watch those guys just break free like that? Oh, it's a blast. I mean, it's, obviously it happened so many times this last game. Um, even the ones that got called back, you kind of go and you run, you see him running 40 yards down. And from a slow guy like me, <clears throat> I'll meet him on the sideline um, and cheer for him there. <laughs> Um, but it's awesome to see him break away and, and, and run all the way down. You played with him at Nebraska. Did you ever did you see this level of, of rushing that we've seen the last two weeks from? Yeah, he's always been explosive. He's always been fast. He's always been able to hit that next gear and get away. Um, but he's definitely playing with the newfound confidence now. And I think with our offense running those quarterback powers and putting him in those positions to just go downhill um, and just kind of read a block and hit it um, really helps his style of play. Kate, who's the fastest guy in the wide receiver unit? Fastest guy in the wideout unit? Um, not me. Um, Malik would say it's him. He's definitely a speedster. We got some fast guys. Seth Porter's fast up there too. Um, but I think so Malik doesn't fight me, I'll, I'll say Malik. <laughs> uh, Want to talk about the onside kick? Uh, not really. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I can, I, I can sit up here and have excuses. You know, I thought it was going to be a boomerang. I thought, you know, this and that. But um, no, I just decided to headbutt it and, and give him a chance to win the game. <laughs> You know, what do you th what do you think about this rivalry? What does this game mean to you guys? And I guess when did you learn about that? Adrian made a joke about that Midwest rivalries have to revolve around crops. He said, "Right, yeah, I've been seeing that. Honestly, I just saw that now that like we're boycotting corn and wheat over corn or something like that. And so I'm just starting to get more and more into the rivalry now. But uh, from all the players I've heard that they don't like to lose this team. Um, I think they've lost from the last two years, and obviously I was a part of last year's loss too. And so." Uh, any loss hurts, but especially the Midwest rivalry hurts a lot. You like Farmageddon? Far, yeah, I saw that too. I'm just trying to figure out what all these, these terms are. <laughs> so if, the more you guys can help me out with this, these rivalry terms, it would help. But uh, that's definitely a good nickname for it. In 2020, it was a really ugly loss for, for K-State against Iowa State. Have you heard guys talking about that? Has that come up that, that those guys, you know, that left a sour taste in their mouth and they want to kind of get some revenge? Yeah, 100%. And that was on their home field. Um, and so this is the first time for them going back there, correct? And so um, talking to those guys and, and just – Hearing what that game was like, um, they're excited and they're motivated to go out there this Saturday. How much room does a wide receiver unit have to grow? Oh, a ton. I mean, um, we obviously want to have a greater impact on the game, right? That's where you kind of play the game for is to have a, a solid impact to positively impact the game. Uh, I think there's definitely room to grow. I think there's room to grow um, in our route running and our depths and our detail. And I think that hopefully we'll be able to show it this Saturday. Specifically, what, what is it that's so difficult, you think, for a defense to defend when you have the threat of both Adrian and Deuce to run on any play? Yeah, it's tough because anytime you have a quarterback that can run, you kind of get in a good man-on-man -man scenario. You know, usually when you have a running back running, you have one guy unblocked, you kind of either have to make miss or, or scheme up a little bit. But now if that running back's the quarterback and that, line, or that Deuce can block like we all know he can, mm -hmm. well, now it's tough because you have to really stack the box, right? And that's where we come into play as wide receivers making sure they can't do that. And so it's just that complimentary football where if they want to sack the box and try to take away Adrian's run game, we have to make him pay outside. And if they want to spread out and try to stop us, that's where Adrian and Deuce come in. And so it's just be able to go out there and, and do whatever the defense tries to stop. Coach Kleiman mentioned last week, I think Adrian confirmed it, that uh, he was pretty fired up at halftime. Adrian was? No, oh, that, you that mean Kleiman was. Kleiman. Yeah. And uh, had you seen that from him before? And. Uh, yeah, very rarely um, the fact that he comes out there, but we needed it. And that's the thing, too, is we responded well to it, obviously. And so we all agreed with exactly what he said um, and his temperament of how he said it. And I think that it definitely gave us motivation and some fire going into the second half. Is that something that works better if, it's, if it is employed on rare occasions rather than... Yeah, I think so, week? because, you know, when someone just comes out and they just scream and scream and yell and yell and yell, it kind of wears down on you. You know, you don't really feel the intensity every single time when you're just feeling the heat constantly. But when someone is usually a calm calm guy that, you know, that is well-spoken and, and does this, and then he comes out, he yells at you and screams at you, you definitely hear it and, you, and it, it sparks you a little bit and it gets you ready to go. And so hearing him do that, it, it definitely helped us going into the second half. What kind of stands out to you about Iowa State's defense? What, what do you got to do to be in? Yeah, they play fast. Um, they play fast, they're physical, and they're very fundamentally sound, right? And so they play the 3-3 three, three stack like we do, like I said, but they do play it a little differently. Uh, their safeties definitely come down and hit it harder, um, and they and they they kind of keep the, the shelf even. And so they try to disguise the coverage a little bit more. Uh, but I think that if we stick to our keys and stick to our game plan, we have a great chance.